हेलो देसी Hello, Anifa. Hi. <laughs> Hi, J Jeff. Daisy has a problem. She uh -huh. can. Daisy has a problem. She cannot enter as a as a guest. What she should do? You mean she hasn't properly uh, registered and all that? No, I, she's very. Well, Has she registered? Do you know? She says from the computer, I cannot put the profile. So I tell her I'm asking for help. So what do I tell her? I'm so happy to see you. <laughs> Maybe I'd like to leave you the whole hour. Uh, what do we do for Dr. Daisy? Let me see. It's working. It's okay. Yeah, you can come down. Yeah. Okay, put it here or bring the one that moves. I have already a panelist that, uh, yeah, you see, she says from the computer where I am, I cannot put the profile. I have Jeff, this is Daisy. So, can you, can you just, uh, the profile you need is when you put your. Yeah, you know, there should be, she should be able just to um, avoid, you know, avoid the profile, pay, you know, aspect. Avoid right? it? Huh? Shall I don't, do that? Don't bother with the profile. Just, just, um, I mean, I'll be honest with you. you, you I really don't know. <laughs> I mean, I, what's the goal? What do you want it to no, look like? I, no, we, I want to have all my panelists. And okay. see them all. Yeah, we have three of them. Okay. Jeff is the first one. Daniela is coming. I know she's coming. And our secretary. But Daisy has a problem. So Daisy is saying that she cannot get in to... Can, can you uh, read it? Get in as speaker? Right. Do you want to just... And she is a speaker. No, I want her to be in. She's uh, my... Is she, is she inside the website? What, Jeff? Is she inside the website? Oh, yeah, since this morning. Can you send her the link? She has the link. All right, so there are the instructions to click on. Did she click on join as speaker to enter the session? Did she click on join as speaker in the yeah, beginning? She said, she said to me that, that the computer... I go to a screen, put the profile. I cannot enter as a speaker. Is she in Chrome? Is she in the Chrome? What, 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 um, 
web browser is she using? She has to use Chrome. Okay, hold on. I, I call her and then we can talk to her. I mean, this is supposed to begin in three minutes, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Daisy? Okay, can you put her on like that? Okay, Daisy? Yes. Okay, can you tell, can you ask her, Jeff? What is your web browser? Is it Chrome or or something else? I think it's a Chrome. I, I am in the page, you know? I enter this in the page, and I am seeing everything here, the, the site. And but when I go join as a speaker, yeah, it goes to a page where I should put my CV. Yeah. So why don't you just click? I I don't quite remember what that is, but can you just click through it without putting anything in it? Uh, it it doesn't go. Oh my good luck. So I'll put, your, put your name in there and then click on it. I did put my name. Okay, first name. It's here. They see. Did you and put your second name on there. Is there now? What? Now enter. Enter. <laughs> Enter. Enter. Okay. Nothing happens. So are you saying that the... Tell her mm -hmm. what I was doing. I, I am Who in a this? table saying, Jeff. what is your profile? No. Introduce yourself to event speakers and the other like-minded attendees. No. She needs to be in as an organizer. Who created the link here? Who created this link? The organizers. Who do you know that organizer's name? Do you have? Yeah, it, was, it was the. Uh, it was yeah, Frank, his telephone number. Frank Jurgen Richter. Yeah. What's his number? But he has a. He has a. a Say it again. Plus four one mm -hmm. seven nine mm -hmm. three zero five mm -hmm. three one one zero. It's Germany. Please press eight zero now. This is Geneva. It says in Berlin. Send her number down for me. Ah. Stacy's number and her name. What's this guy's name? Frank. Frank. Daisy, what is your number? My number is plus five five four one nine nine one nine one three zero oh, one six. Write down her name. One six. Yeah. Yes. Hi, Daniela. I see that you could join. How are you, Daniela? Very well, thank you. <laughs> Thanks. I'm so happy, Hi, Daniela. But we yeah. we miss uh, we miss uh, Daisy. It's all right. Uh, she will make it. <laughs> we are all, uh, you know, with the exception of those who were born um, one year ago, two years ago, up to twenty years ago. So for them, this is just a piece of bread. Uh, um, dealing with all these technologies all in a sudden can be challenging. Plus. The broadband is not always good in all countries, and so it depends also on that the connection. Yeah. yeah, very much so. Daisy, do you hear us and do you see us? Can we do it without the, the image? Do you hear? No, because she's on the phone. And we have five minutes. Is there a way for you to, as the moderator, to? Um, welcome a guest to come online or is it that not possible? Let's try, I'll go in. Yeah? Yeah, copy and paste this link and send it to me. This, mm -hmm. the whole thing? Yeah, I'll do you, you do it. I, I have a angel with me. I can see that. Um, <laughs> you you look like an astronaut. 
Uh, my question is, is this uh, recorded? Uh, probably, yeah, the, yeah, it goes to YouTube, or yeah, somehow. Okay, so let's behave. <laughs> but, you know, between the two of you, you have so much to say that uh, I can start. I will start in, in uh, exactly in, uh, in four minutes. In four minutes? So shall we rehearse in four minutes? No, 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 just stay, please, don't go away. <laughs> We, 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 I don't know how this function. Uh, nice, uh, Hanif. If there were some uh, music on the background, so while we wait for the. For no, no. Oh, you, want, you want music? <laughs> no, I'm. I'm just saying for the. You know, I don't know if anyone is connecting besides the speakers, and so and people do not know what's happening. Yeah, it's a live. I don't see. Uh, you can see on the upper right hand oh, corner the but number I, of people. I, I yeah, believe. there are three so far, and I think it is recorded because I think I see the red spot there. Um, not sure if it is blinking though. All oh, right, right. Organizer and speakers. Well, Daisy knows very well the, te the new technique, you know. So, what are we doing? I'm helping her get in. And then I'm going to log in also to see if it works. For you to promote someone from attendees to panelists. Yeah, I don't want to talk to you know, and and and, and uh, you know everything we say now is recorded. Yes. So we have to, to you know, Jeff, you look a superb form, and Daniela, you look very pretty, ready. To, you know, there is more than uh, nine hundred people in this. Uh, there is an echo. Um, there is an echo, and I don't know how to. Oh, maybe I can switch off my microphone here. Maybe. Let me see. so to avoid uh, having this echo. No, I can't. Okay. So what I was saying, you still have the echo. What I was saying is uh, the number is huge. You know, I don't know exactly, but it's thousand. I don't know also how many events, but it's every 45 minutes there is uh, events in plenary or event in a side uh, event. So it's a very heavy uh, undertaking and I'm proud that we can make it, you know, here we are. So what's happening now? Don't worry, keep going. So, so if you can, you can um, among the many sessions, you might wish to say which session this is and what it's all about. Yeah. For those who might connect now or when it goes on YouTube. Okay. So this session is the only session on civil society, believe it or not. We are totally surrendered by the corporate sector. And I thought it was... Uh, great if we could at least, you know, be partner and uh, have a, a say, get acquainted to uh, the private sector and not leave it as a silo because the private sector at the end of the day cannot be so successful if a civil society is not behind. So this is how this event was born. So to be part of this huge uh, undertaking that it is worldwide, and for me, when you say worldwide, it means civil society. This is the world. So we are going to, with the panel that we have, and I will introduce the panel, panel in a little bit, uh, talk, talk, about, talk about what the, I'm trying to find the, the theme, and I don't know. So what's happening now? Well, the theme is, yeah. as far as I recall... Uh, your code for the phone. What do I do? Your code. Sure. Oh, sorry. The, the title is Civil Society Transformation and Global Ch 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 Challenges. Of course, civil society encompass everybody, and transformation and global changes is what's happening for the last 10 years. The transformation is absolutely incredible and uh, 
uh, Jeff, you and I are going to talk about it. And the global challenges, unfortunately, means now more than it was uh, before. The global challenges are now all tarnished by COVID-19. So I saw all the events, they all have global uh, challenges, they all have COVID. But what I want to know is from our own view, on our light, how we are so living between the global changes, the transformation, and our own work on SDGs uh, to, to the world. You know, how we are copying, how we are distressing, how we are, we have to say the truth, you know, and not act like everything is fine and that tomorrow will be better. No, tomorrow is not going to be better. So I'm going, what I wanted to focus on is to show the corporate sector that civil society is highly present, it has to be recognized, and we are not going to achieve any business venture if the civil society is not there. And what they also have to recognize, and that, of course, Jeff, you will be able to, to do more, is that it has been transformed in a movement. And that movement is covered by a moment. So you have to acknowledge this. So this is one of the goals, Daniela, I wanted to get in this meeting. So now there is a, a chat. We are going to start the meeting with uh, Daniela Bass and Jeffrey Ruffin and myself as a moderator. We have uh, Ambassador Akram from Pakistan who will join the, for the last uh, half hour. He's uh, very busy also cutting himself in pieces and going to one event. He's event hopping to another one. But our friendship and we know each other since 2005 makes it possible that he will be part of this uh, already trunked uh, event. So, distinguished audience, dear Daniela, dear Jeff, it is a great pleasure to be able to host this session in the midst of corporate sector. And to add to it, the civil society dimension, looking for transformation, dealing in dealing with global challenges in COVID, during COVID. You will recall many moons, many moons ago, in addressing NGO during the Millennium Celebration, the Secretary General noted that by translating your concern to collective action, you will be heard more loudly. By working through consensus rather than confrontation, you will be involved more closely. By forging alliances rather than competition, you will pool your, your resources more effectively. By looking beyond special interests to the common interests and by making the connection between the local and the global, you will make a difference more widely. However, the persistent problem of unemployment I have to stop and welcome Daisy. Daisy, are you with us? Yes, I think so. Huh? Okay. Hi, okay. okay. Daniela. How are Hello. you? Okay, oh. thank you so much. You are again. Okay, so we have started, but I'm sure you can catch back. However, the persistent problem of unemployment, environmental degradation, the mar marginalization of youth and older persons, and the increasing inadequacy of government to meet the need of their citizens have created the space for the emergence of civil society groups. We recognize them now as powerful movement. Civil society consultation produced in 1975 a people declaration. It was first handover to review to the president of the GA by the team of Jeffrey. So Jeffrey Hans can tell us more about it in a moment. It is a huge accomplishment to see that this new mechanism contribute to the transformation of a civil society. This is not to say that the relation between member state and representative of civil society is always an easy one. A variety of problems still remain, mainly political. 
The few governments still object to the participation of citizen groups in the international context because they see international treaties and institutions as agreement between sovereign nations. And as with all the new development come problems. The expanding role of NGO in governance has implications for public debate in policy making in terms of their legitimacy and accountability. But still, we can say that the transformation at the international level has been remarkable. Over the last decade, the NGO contribution to intergovernmental deliberation has expanded substantially and has now to deal with an invincible threat, the spread of COVID-19. And the need for sustainable economies creates a new imperative to international dialogue, cooperation, and partnerships. In this day and age, we should have been able to respond better. In fact, we are faced with a series of crises linked to poverty, vulnerability, environmental degradation, climate change. Moreover, the explosive reaction to systemic racism in some countries and related social conflict still pose serious obstacles to development in many countries. Rising, rising violence and political instability are putting a break on sustainable development and, of course, on the SDG implementation. To succeed in dealing with these global changes, we need stable and predictable governance that includes widespread civic participation and partnership at different levels of society. This implies a vision of strong governance. The pandemic has brought dramatic economic changes and are transforming countries through the world. This is causing a great disruption in traditional society and anxiety everywhere as people feel they were losing control of their lives, their cultures, their communities, and even their place in the world. Sadly, the COVID-19 is reversing much of the progress made with the SDGs on poverty, healthcare, and education, among others. Like in similar natural disaster, it is the poorest, the most vulnerable, including women and children, old person, person with disability, migrants and refugees. This heartbreaking list reverberated in another one aging, disability, employment and decent work, family, indigenous people, inequality, poverty eradication, social inclusion, sport and development and peace, youth. 10 topics crying out to Daniel Abbas, our director for the Division of Inclusive Social Development. Right now, she's not celebrating the 75th anniversary of the UN, Today, she is busy with the 30th anniversary of the International Day of Older. In February, God willing, we will work on it. But right now, her division has a priority of the theme of 59th session of the Commission of Social Development, which is ensure healthy lives and promote well-being for all age and we are all in SDG3. Over to you, Daniela. Thank you so much, Hanifa. Well, uh, thanks to colleagues and uh, all those who are uh, listening to us now and will be watching us on YouTube uh, since this is a recorded event. And also, I'm very proud to be part of this uh, Horasis uh, major global event uh, uh, where there are um, hundreds of uh, different meetings, uh, we are not competing but adding value to. Uh, thank you for um, introducing me, Hanifa. And um, yes, uh, I'm very proud to be uh, leading the Division for Inclusive Social Development 
in the United Nations Department of Economic and Social Affairs based in New York City. Um, the division, as Hanifa said, uh, deals with all these uh, different social groups uh, um, more vulnerable than others at times, and that is indigenous peoples, persons with disabilities, uh, family that, uh, you know, uh, is uh, the, 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 the central point where all these different generations meet, including youth and uh, older persons, as I said. So um, let me start by saying that I would like to focus with you on four points by um, looking at what is the, the objective of this session. The first point is content and objective. The second, role of civil society and challenges. The third, global challenges and partnerships to overcome the challenges themselves. And the last is how to do it. So let me start first with the context and the objectives of this session from my viewpoint. The world is facing one of the worst crises, as uh, you said, Hanifa, due to COVID-19 pandemic and it is impacting all dimensions of life. I will try to use the terminology, kind of not UNEs if I can, but more simple so that for everyone, even from those from the private sector that not necessarily are accustomed at the UNEs to understand the importance of the role of civil society, working together then with the United Nations and the private sector. So, um, we we um, are um, aware that uh, with this session, hopefully, we will look at the economic and the social fallouts of COVID-19 pandemic and their dramatic impact on the social development and the well-being worldwide. So this crisis really risks to reverse in decades of progress in the fight uh, against poverty and the exacerbating already high level of inequalities. At the same time, the COVID-19 crisis provides the opportunity to rethink existing socioeconomic policy frameworks in order to rebuild better. And here, the civil society, the private sector, academia, the United Nations and individuals can play a very important role. By the way, for civil society, we consider, or civil society considers um, um, communities of citizens that are linked by common interests and collective activities. So when we say civil society, this is what we mean. Therefore, also the private sector can be part, is part of the civil society, though often when we say civil society, at least within the United Nations, we think of the non-governmental organizations, the so-called NGOs. So um, by aligning the policy framework, frameworks within the vision and objectives of the 2030 agenda that was approved by governments, 194 governments back in 2015, with the 17 goals that have to be sustainable to be reached by the year 2030, then, um, and focusing on the overarching theme that is eradicating poverty and reducing inequalities, again, the civil society can play a major role. Now, what is one of the final objectives of this meeting? I believe the objective chosen is very relevant to what the world needs now, that is to create synergic collaboration between civil society with authorities and grassroots groups from NGOs to academia and as I said, in the, the private sector and individuals to ensure that existing policy frameworks at national level are implemented, are strengthened and revised in innovative ways to respond to the present situation. And this objective is key for achieving the 2030 agenda that is the well-being of people. And for this, it's important to revitalize and confirm multilateralism as a way forward, working together not just in small groups, but together globally. And the space to discuss uh, this is provided by the United Nations, where civil society participates and are and is an agent of change. Now, the concept note of this session also makes reference at a certain point to um, some bodies within the United Nations that we call intergovernmental uh, processes and bodies. One we, of, of these is the Commission for Social Development that will focus on uh, digital um, technologies and the social development. And this session 
also makes reference to the uh, efforts needed to ensure full digital inclusion and digital equality. So technology has a great potential to promote social progress, but can also exacerbate existing inequalities. So this is another role with the, this, where the civil society, together with the private sector, can play in making sure that this does not happen. And this could be brought to the discussion of the Commission for, um, in, you know, on social development that has this theme next year, next February 2001. Um, so technologies provide a plethora of opportunities as well as risks. Now, on one hand, digital technologies hold the promise of facilitating a transition towards sustainable development and advancing living standards and well-being for all. And we have seen that the technology is playing a major role nowadays with the crisis we're facing, the pandemic COVID-19 is allowing us, for instance, now to be connected through digital technologies. On the other hand, though, the rapid expansion of digital technologies gives um, and rises the risk of unintended consequences in the context of political economy, of high market concentration and dominance by a few companies. And there are so many sessions in, in the meeting, in, in this important gathering today that are dealing with the digital technologies and technologies in, in, in general. Big industries are discussing about this. So the, the role of the civil society here is very important to make sure that inequalities are not created. Um, now, the digital divide, therefore, is a major issue that urgently needs to be addressed, and the civil society can do that. Digital technologies are rapidly transforming all facets of our lives, and digital um, it can also be, though, um, an important tool to promote inclusion of all people, of all ages, and of all abilities. I leave the dis at home disability, and I bring here the abilities of people. So digital inclusion is fundamental to promoting equality and equity, and increasing digital divide and gender gap needed to be addressed. So please, the civil society, do that, and make sure that elements for digital inclusion are taken into consideration by policymakers and the private sector when it comes to accessibility, affordability, availability, physical and digital infrastructure and digital skills and use. Now, second point, what is the role of the civil society and the challenges the civil society is facing from the UN perspective? Some I already mentioned. The primary responsibility of governments is to adopt and implement responses to COVID-19 pandemic that are specific to their national context in accordance with their obligations under applicable inter international agreements. Why, in my view, among the primary responsibilities and challenges of the civil, that the civil society has to face around the world are those to address the problems posed by the pandemic with the authorities, the policymakers in the countries where they operate by offering solutions in support of member states and focusing on measures to protect the health, safety and well-being of people. So we know that the civil society is very much aware about the COVID pandemic and how it is disproportionately heavy impacting women, older people, youth, children, persons with disabilities, and all those groups we mentioned earlier on, as well as those who are poor or they're losing their jobs because of the present pandemic and in general, all marginalized segments of the population. And I want to give you an example, homelessness, people in poverty, many of which in this pandemic are losing their houses or cannot afford to pay the rent, uh, become homeless. So not only this is not human, but these people are more exposed to the virus and then they can become carriers of it wherever they can find some refuge. It's a serious thing. Therefore, in the case of NGOs, they have the challenge and the power to make sure that these groups are included in the steps forward to the recovery. The third point, global challenges and the sustainable development goal 17, partnerships and international cooperation. Multilateralism and solidarity 
can greatly benefit of the engagement of civil society from the private sector viewpoint also and the academia and the various forms of associations, including NGOs, in promoting the importance of multilateralism in forging partnerships for international cooperation to support countries and their communities and their societies. People, we go back to people. Multilateralism and solidarity at all levels are the only way, the only way for the world to effectively respond to global crises such as the COVID-19 pandemic and their consequences. So let's be, be people-centered. And what to do? This is the last. Well, in the United Nations, there is something called Economic and Social Council of the UN. Um, and it decides uh, uh, what are the priority themes to be discussed. And the ECOSOC, so-called, decided that in February 2021, the Commission for Social Development that my division supports will have as a focus socially just transition towards sustainable development and the role of digital technologies on social development and the well-being for all. In a nutshell, I would like to go more in depth, uh, but I can't. So I can just say that uh, uh, the Commission for Social Development is, is uh, following uh, the mandate of the um, Copenhagen Summit of 1995. Uh, that is the World uh, Social Summit on Social Development, the, the only one uh, for the time being in, uh, held uh, globally, and also the 2030 Agenda. And uh, I encourage the private sector, the civil society to encourage the private sector as well, uh, to work together to support the, also the roadmap of the Secretary General for Digital Cooperation to advance a safer, more equitable digital world and therefore enabling the creation of strong transformative agendas for sustainable development. I am more than happy to provide more information, but I believe that the outcome of this session will contribute to the works of the Commission by providing concrete evidence-based recommendations on innovative solutions and actions to be taken for enabling a socially just transition towards sustainable development with a focus on the role of digital technologies. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Daniela, for your report. We will certainly have it as an introduction to the Commission. And now I want to salute Mr. Ambassador Akram. Ambassador Akram, you, Hello. Daniela, how are you to ECOSOC, nice thinking that uh, you are going to take care of the digital issue, you are going to take care of the global challenges, you are going to take care of private sector and civil society being one. I heard you earlier at the Global Compact, so I'm sure you're ready to do that. And I would uh, ask His Excellency to continue to listen to the civil society voice. Yeah. Today it's, uh, it's uh, represented by Jeffrey Holmes. He has been the person doing the movement of the UN 75, bringing that declaration to the PGA. And I think that you are, Jeffrey, absolutely the right candidate for us today. You have the floor and you have the ambassador here. Oh, the sound. And the microphone. There we go. <laughs> How could I forget uh, unmuting the microphone? Well, uh, like I was saying, Hanifa, uh, I am indeed honored to be invited to speak for a global audience of key decision makers from the private and public sectors and the company of such esteemed panelists. Um, what I'd like to do is uh, first introduce uh, the UN 2020 and Together First campaigns and then reflecting upon the title of this panel, Civil Society Transformation and Global Challenges, what must governments, business, and civil society do together to unlock the promise of the SDGs in the 2030 Agenda? I'd like to look at the impact of the COVID-19 crisis upon civil society actors worldwide, and then um, uh, look at the follow-up to the UN political uh, UN 75 political declaration adopted by world leaders last week and its potential to accelerate 
the achievement of the 2030 agenda and the SDGs by 2030. Uh, first, UN 2020, what is it? It is a civil society led initiative that has been dedicated to using the 75th anniversary of the United Nations as an opportunity to take stock and strengthen the UN system in support of a people-centered multilateralism. And Together First was uh, founded uh, in 2018 to create a to-do list for the international community comprising concrete feasible steps to mitigate global catastrophic risks and put us on a path to the broader global governance revolution we need. Now, when we launched uh, UN 2020 in 2017, little did we know that three years later, the world would, would be gripped by this once in a century pandemic that starkly reveals a fundamental paradox now confronting humanity. While the coronavirus has revealed more than ever that the destiny of people and planet is shared and that the systems on which we rely are in interdependent, it has also sharpened the trends of a toxic rise of authoritarian nationalism, isolation, and unilateralism. So the pandemic forces us to answer the question, what kind of world do we want to live in? And this is what the UN 20 initiative has, uh, 2020 initiative has, has, uh, seeks to address. Last May, the UN 75 People's Declaration and Plan for Global Action was adopted at the UN 75 People's Forum which was formally presented to the President of the General Assembly, outlining our vision for the future of the UN and global governance more broadly, and to, together first released their report on stepping stones for a better future, 10 ideas for world leaders who are serious about building back better. And so some of the key demands included the, uh, the, the, the purpose of the People's Declaration and the Stepping Stones Report was to put forward some of the key demands of civil society as government delegates negotiated their own political declaration that was adopted on the 21st of September at the official commemoration of UN 75. Now the People's Declaration calls for immediate actions that reflect the urgency of the implementation of the 2030 agenda, you know, the Paris Agreement, especially in light of the ongoing pandemic, such as Re uh, requesting the full funding of the UN, as well as proposing medium-term medium, medium -term proposals and long-term aspirations that includes the appointment of a high-level champion for civil society at the UN, upgrading the peacebuilding commission into a peacebuilding council, and the establishment of a UN parliamentary assembly. And in the lead-up to the UN 75 commemoration, UN 2020 also released a UN 75 eminent persons letter signed by 49 former heads of state, foreign ministers, and UN officials led by Mary Robinson and former uh, president of the General Assembly, Maria Fernanda Espinoza. The signatories urged world leaders to take stock of present challenges to the multilateral system by calling for a dedicated inter intergovernmental process to pursue and improvements to the system, to the UN system, and the follow-up to the UN 75 political declaration. Now, let's look at promoting transformative systemic change through the SDGs. The People's Declaration states, our economic and financial order as constituted is antithetical to achieving the SDGs by 2030. There is a need to urgently align macroeconomic frameworks with the social, economic, and environmental dimensions of sustainable development, recognizing the economy should be a means, not an end, to a better society and healthier planet. Along these lines, a group of NGOs led by the Global Policy Forum and Social Watch recently, recently issued their spotlight report on sustainable development entitled, Shifting Policies for Systemic Change, Lessons from Global COVID-19 Crisis. Re recognizing that the COVID-19 crisis and the worldwide measures to tackle it have deeply affected communities, societies, and economies around the globe, the report demonstrates that the implementation of the 2030 Agenda, the SDGs, and the Paris Agreement have been put at high risk in many countries. And according to another report from the nonprofit Social Progress Imperative, the world will not achieve the SDGs until at least 2082. And the consequences and fallout from COVID could also add an additional 10 years 
to the prediction, setting the target goal of 2030 back 60 years to 2092. So calls for building back better by just pushing the reset button will not change the game. What we need are deep structural changes in societies and economies that ensure the primacy of human rights, gender justice, and sustainability. So while the crisis is threatening up to having a half billion more people back into extreme poverty, the fortunes of the ultra wealthy are skyrocketing. Meanwhile, existing inequalities and discrimination, including those related to gender, are being reinforced by the coronavirus crisis. So while national action is vital, no country can address the global challenges alone. Now, in advance of, of the meeting of the heads of state on financing the 2030 agenda and the era of COVID that took place this last Tuesday, over 375 organizations and networks issued an open letter to world leaders that offered a menu of options for consideration by governments, which include key recommendations on such issues as debt, illicit financial flows, global liquidity, and the financial stability, among others. In other words, policy recommendations that requires the implementation at the regional and global levels, not just at the domestic level. So it is therefore all the more important that longer term reforms not only support economic recovery, but also promote necessary structural change, which will decisively improve people's lives. We need to pursue climate justice and bold regulation of global finance for the common good and underpinning this all, boosting multilateral solidarity by clearly strengthening the UN in its bodies. I'd like to jump to the follow-up to the UN 75 political declaration that was adopted by world leaders last week and consider its potential to accelerate the achievement of the SDGs by 2030. I think everyone on this call knows, of course, the UN 75 political declaration that was officially adopted by heads of state on the 21st of September recognizes that global challenges are interconnected and can only be addressed through reinvigorated multilateralism as demonstrated by the COVID-19 pandemic. They agree that multilateralism is not an option, but a necessity to build back better for a more equal, resilient and sustainable world with the UN at the center of these efforts. And they also recognize that the implementation of the 2030 agenda and by extension, the Paris Climate Agreement is necessary for survival. It clearly lays out 12 areas where international unity is essential, from peace and security to climate change, to harnessing digital technology, upgrading the UN, and ensuring sustainable financing for all. And significantly, the declaration calls upon the Secretary General to report back before the end of the session of the GA with recommendations to advance our common agenda and to respond to current future challenges. Based on this mandate to the Secretary General, as the decade of action and delivery for sustainable development begins, we are calling for the UN to engage all relevant stakeholders in a stock taking exercise that will establish benchmarks and timelines for each of the 12 issue areas just endorsed by the heads of state in their UN 75 declaration in support of the achievement, the accelerated achievement of the 2030 Agenda and Paris Agreement. Okay. Whether, and, and just, just to, to conclude, um, with the political declaration now adopted, our next step is to develop these ben benchmarks based upon the commitments by world leaders in the declaration to hold governments to account for promises they have made. Thank you, Jeffrey. Thank you so much. I'm Daisy, if you don't mind, I will, I will give the floor to Ambassador Akram. And then, because I'm afraid of the timing. So Ambassador, for civil society, it's so important that they hear what you have to say in your new mandate at ECOSOC. And then I will give the floor to end to Daisy. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Nifa. Thank you. Uh, to all uh, uh, my friends in the civil society organizations uh, for uh, inviting me to participate 
uh, in this event. Uh, I think the remarks uh, which I just heard uh, reflect the gravity of the challenges uh, we face and the importance of the response that uh, we need to mobilize. Uh, as I have said before uh, in the Council, uh, we are of course facing the immediate challenge of the COVID-19 crisis. Uh, but this crisis came superimposed on weaknesses in the international system which were already existent. And the crisis has had uh, one effect, which is to reveal to all of us the weaknesses, uh, the inequities, and the inequalities and structural uh, flaws that are present in the international economic social system, uh, which have exacerbated the effects of this crisis on the poorest countries and on the poorest people among uh, all countries. Uh, but this crisis uh, can be solved, uh, can be addressed uh, together with the crisis of the international system. And that we have to build back, but build back on, on the basis of the blueprint which we have. And that blueprint is the SDGs. Uh, this is a consensus document. We, we, we have consensus targets to achieve. Uh, and therefore, all the efforts that we deploy to recover from the COVID crisis should be targeted to achieve the SDGs, if possible, within the time frame of this decade. But we have also a looming threat that hangs over the entire world. And that threat is the threat of climate change, uh, the threat of global warming, the loss of biodiversity, uh, all which transforms the present crisis we are facing, the economic and social crisis that, of that COVID has triggered, has, be, has become transformed into an existential crisis. Because if we do not achieve the Paris goals on climate change, if we are not able to stop global warming, if we are not able to stop the devastation of the oceans and the glaciers, we are facing a world that may become virtually uninhabitable for the human race. So this is an existential crisis. What can we do about it? I think uh, we, the most important thing that we, we need to do is to mobilize political will. Political will at all levels, at the level of governments, at the level of the private sector, at the level of civil society, we need to be pulling in one direction. And that direction, in my view, is, is of course the SDGs as a central goal for our societies and, and states. Uh, but also, we need to crystallize the realization that we need to have one world and that what we are aiming for is to bring the world together because at the present moment the world politically, economically, socially, environmentally, our world is pulling apart There's with divisions amongst countries, divisions within countries and we need to bring it all together into a new vision, a revived vision that was present in the UN Charter and which we have somehow lost the spirit at the, in, at the international level, at all levels. So we need to bring it all together and it is my hope to be able to work with all my friends uh, in the civil society organizations, in private sector, as well as my colleagues at the UN to try and revive that spirit. That is what we should be aiming for. That is what we should push in member states for. And I look forward to cooperating with you and for your support in pushing in this direction.
Thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you so much, Ambassador Akrim. You give us the open door on how to with you, definitively help you with your program. And Daisy, what would be your answer to our ambassador? Don't talk about what you do, but tell him what you will do for, for ECOSOC. The, the sound, Daisy. 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 She has to, 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 we have to do it. Yeah. Okay. 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 So good afternoon, everybody from Brazil. I have a little bit a very unstable network because we have a huge uh, uh, rain right now in our country. In my cold Curitiba, that was 37 degrees and now is raining a lot. I didn't uh, met personally yet. Uh, but Ambassador Akram, yes, long time ago. I don't know if he remembers me, but anyway, uh, I have been in Pakistan as well uh, many times. Uh, my dear Hanifa and Daniela. Well, I'm very happy to be invited to that meeting. And it calls me my attention very much. There's two big words that I want, I, I printed for me transformation and global challenge. Uh, for the first time, because of pandemic, we could not go to New York. I have assisted the General Assembly and also the celebration of the 75th anniversary of the UN. We will be 75th, uh, we will have our 75th anniversary in two years. Uh, I was listening very, very, very careful to all leaders, to all leaders of governments and the heads of state speaking, uh, starting with the uh, President of the General Assembly and the, the Secretary General. And it came to me a lot to, to think about how we have been working back in the year 2000, when we are full of strength governments, the UN, the NGOs, the universities, the parliamentarians, when we came out with the MDGs, and also when we got together in 2015 to talk about the uh, SDGs. Global challenges and transformation. We are really looking for a one global challenges in transformation for the last 50 years. Transformation is needed right now. And I start telling you about what I heard from the heads of states. All of them told we need transformation. We need transformation. Our global challenges will not be touched if we don't get to transformation. How to do this transformation? We are year by year, it seems doing the same thing. And Jeffrey, I was very happy to hear the word, one word from you that was local level. Our global challenges will not be uh, really leading to transformation if we don't get to local level. Uh, we are working with families. Families live at local level. And uh, the World Family Organization is with Hanifa, with Nikhil said from a long time ago, trying to bring the local level to the global challenges so they will learn about that and they will bring these lessons to their local level where they can transmit to the people. It's so difficult to reach that. But local governments, it's incredible when we get to them, even now, five years after the SDGs, the, the Paris Agreement, a little bit less, and we ask them, 
about the knowledge that they have for that, they say no. Most of local level mayors and local parliamentarians, they don't know about that. When you get to the civil society organizations, most of them know about that. So we have a global challenge, how to bring the collaboration of the global level to the local level, and how to bring local level to get the challenges that the organizations have in order to make these links to work together. The civil society is the representing of families to us at all levels. And we really would like to see this global challenge to bring the transformation of the global agreements, of the global lessons, of the global challenges to the local level so we can also link to the families. Uh, when uh, uh, you said, uh, someone said the SDGs will be achieved only in 2063, uh, something like that, that's impossible. We need to bring the local level to embrace, like the national level and the international level, to the SDGs. So people for where the UN is for with the people can get to that and can also exercise our means, our challenges, our aspirations, and put our hands all together to work. Ambassador Akram, you are quite, quite certain since the year 2000 that our hands have to be shaken. Our hands have to be together. And I remember one meeting that we did in Pakistan, Hanifa, with the Women's Association, National Women's Association. I am so happy to see that you are back there in the ECOSOC. I am sure that uh, we have on you a big pillar to help us with the civil society and with the local level to bring this word message to that. In order to achieve SDGs, everybody together, holding hands, and Jeffrey, come with me, and I come with you. Let's work with local level families together and bring the message of our leaders and the UN to the local level. Thank you very much. That is my message. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you so much, Daisy. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you so much also, Daniela. Well, each time I have an opportunity, President Akra, to show you a little bit how supportive we are about your work, about your program, and we are really looking forward to be participating, not just talking. You know, the final, Daniela asked me before leaving, what was the final objective of this meeting? Well, from the bottom of my heart, it was to connect with several and different stakeholders in a positive spirit to bring creative solution for inspiration and unite all together to build back better and achieve the SDGs. I thank you all. I'm very, very grateful for your time and the quality of your intervention. And I will just say to you goodbye and see you at the next event of ECOSAR. Thank, thank you so much, Anita. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. I think we are on our time. Thank you. I just pause it.